Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. The shaykhs have a spiritual awareness and what Allah inspire within their hearts for an understanding. Don't assume their silence is a ignorance that they're not talking about something or reprimanding someone on something, not their job. The more dangerous ones are the silent ones. The ones who immediately reply back, talk back, yell back, fight back on the internet because we see so many different characteristics, these are different level. That the assumption that if the shaykh is not saying anything from my bad characteristics don't presume that they're not knowing. Allah inspires the heart and that they are in reality jasusu qalb. They have a spying ability within the heart of the believer and non-believer because the heart has a signal that comes out for heavenly beings and that signal is readable and each to their darajat. Big awliyaullah, Allah imagine what He has given to them of abilities. And those whom training with awliyaullah, again their hearts have an ability. So it means that keep the connection, keep the communication, keep the sense of being a student and following the tariq. And that when you need a du'a, you need an event, something is happening in life that you're requesting a du'a, that is the position of the tariqah. That it's a two-way relationship, you support, you watch, you participate, you get the books, you come to the website, you go to the articles. And then the role of the shaykh is to pray and guide and teach that creates that relationship that makes a bond. That nowadays because of internet everybody's saying, I'm following this, I'm following that. In actuality it's not one way where you just sort of think, I like this shaykh on YouTube, now I'm following him. The concept of the baya, initiation and wajib al-taqlid, that it's a wajib on Islamic belief to follow, atiullah, ati rasulu ulul amri minkum and obey Allah Obey Sayyidina Muhammad and obey the ulul amr means that that concept alone is why many people's nafs keep a distance from the shaykhs. Oh I didn't know I could uh, email a concern or a question. In reality your inner being knows it but you don't want to follow the guidance of it. Because they're jasus, they understand when you're saying and writing, they don't know. You know that the email is away, you email everybody on earth except the shaykh. You're not afraid of anyone on earth except the shaykh and I didn't think the shaykh is approachable. Then what the heck is he doing? He's, his job is like a doctor to see patients. If there's a shaykh with no students he's not a shaykh, he's a, bo a bored person. What's he going to do all day long? The reason Allah elevate his status inshaAllah or give him a guidance, give him a taqwa, give him an understanding and uloom and knowledge was to be of service to people. If he's not serving people he's better off dead and he knows that relationship with his Lord, Ya Rabbi if I'm not here to serve, I'm not, I'm not, there's nobody for me to serve, better for me to go back home to the heavens. So their life is to be of service to the best of their ability. And they should know their level and where their level stops of their ability. And it's the responsibility of the student to interact, that ask the questions, get the guidance, get the understanding in life and make your line of communication to be clear on what is it that's happening in your lives and then support. You get the books, go to the articles, come online, watch, participate. Then you find yourself, no, no I am connected with this shaykh through a series of dreams and different interactions and signs in your life and you'll begin to feel that you are connected and that there is a shaykh that knows about me and his nazar or her nazar is upon me and I'm not alone.
I'm not just drifting wood in an ocean of loneliness. That these shaykhs know if the shaykh's eyes are with you, his ears upon you, his thoughts are praying for you, it's a cell phone from Sayyidina Muhammad What can be more beautific than to know that Sayyidina Muhammad is now looking at me, talking with me, answering me, interacting with me. Some are small mobile phones, some may be bigger mobile phones because the big ones like to think they're very big. So don't think you're as we're so big, so, okay so you're a big phone but it's still a phone. It has one speaker and a camera, doesn't matter how powerful you think your phone is. The one on the other end is the power, Sayyidina Muhammad As much as we can empty ourselves of ourself, as much as we can live a life of serving. This life of service and its blessings and its dressings. So it's important to keep this line of communication open. It's important and essential in our belief to keep emailing. The problem is you may watch other people, you may begin to click on a video and your belief goes in a different direction. Talk to a friend. The most dangerous is to follow fellow tariqah people because each person has a sickness. Each person has a remedy if they're truly following a shaykh. He has a zikr or she has a zikr, she has a series of talks that are directed to them, they have an understanding and a medication. The most dangerous is when they begin to share their medication with each other. Oh you know shaykh told me to do this, shaykh told me to recite this, you start to recite this, you start to… No, no, it, it was not meant for you to take your prescription and dispense on the street, that's a drug dealer. When he, he takes a medicine go on the street, says, I got this prescription from my doctor, you want it for t 10 bucks a pill? You're dealing. That's not guidance. Guidance is you have to go sit with the shaykh via email, put your concerns, let the relationship to develop. And then describe and, and ask for a remedy that's suitable for you. Now you built a relationship. There in that step is the secret of tariqah and the secret of the nafs and secret of how shaitan won't let that happen. That's when you should understand, I don't feel I'm going to ask the question, I'm not going to email them a question, I'm not. Because the shaitan is very heavy on you. Telling you, don't enter this relationship, don't let them to begin to guide you. We won't, you'll surrender your free will. What is it that Allah won't back from you? What is it the only thing that Allah gave to you? Allah doesn't want your money, Allah wants your will. The only thing dear to Allah is your free will. The free will in which you can choose to yell on the streets, scream, shout, say whatever you want, think whatever you want, right and wrong whatever you want. That because within that free will lives the abode of shaitan. He plays with insan's free will and, and he in play in plays with them to teach them, guide them, run out onto the street for suicide. Go voice all your opinions and let faces be photographed and put yourself in every type of danger until a day when somebody comes knocking on your door and calls for you. Were you that crazy one out on the street screaming, come with us? And awliyaullah come into our lives and teach us, no, 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 this is, this is the abode of shaitan. Don't go onto the street, don't in get involved in these situations. Every type of guidance will come. Every type of issue in your life that you want to make a decision, that you think it's important, you don't have to listen. But at least you get the understanding from the shaykhs as far as, why do you think different from what they're thinking? Why are their coordinates with all their training saying something and your coordinates with no training is saying something completely different? Then your tariq, your path 
is to meet to that level of coordination. When people want to understand what is the tariqah? The tariqah is the path in which from what your mind tells you to what their mind is telling you, their heart is telling you and that is your tariq. Don't make it complicated, my tariq is to Allah This is the ultimate goal if you tell yourself that's impossible. The tariq is that, how can my path match what your guidance is? So it's this big now. It's not from here all the way to heaven, how I'm going to reach here, I'm going to do my salah, I'm going to do the miracle of this ayatul Qur'an, I'm going to receive from all of this high level complicated spooky stuff. Just that how come when I ask a question I want to go this way and then the guidance that the shaykh is giving me is like complete 180 degrees different way. So then my tariq becomes just from this point of A to B. How I can take a life in which to follow the guidance of this person. And that person is guiding you because your heart is connected. If your heart is not connected, you don't feel an affinity, you don't feel that this is a language which I assimilate with, a way of teaching I assimilated with, change the channel. Don't email us your opinions, it's not a soup kitchen and you tell us how to change the whole recipe. You have to find and be true to your heart. You take your heart and I say, my Lord that you are the, the guider of the heart, guide me to guidance. And when you reach like a camel in a desert that you've truly been searching, truly been searching, you reach an oasis and you know exactly you reached it. You're hearing things you wanted to hear. You're experiencing what you wanted to experience. Every type of mir miraculous understanding is coming to you. Then Allah will ask you, then how many of my favours did you want to deny? You ask for guidance, your heart is assimilating with them because it has to assimilate. If he is vibrating at a level and a language and a teaching and an understanding and you're not getting it and you're not interested in it, your vibration is for someone else. That's it, it's such a simple understanding. Allah put into you to listen to us, you want to know about tafakkur, you want to know how to connect your heart. You want to understand the unseen realm, you want to understand the immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad you're guided here to this channel and to this shaykh and to the shaykhs that support him. If you're not interested in these subjects you would not be tuning in. So then my tariq and my path is to match that will, match my will with the guidance that is coming through this from Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. Obedience of Allah Almighty is a isharat and a guidance coming into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad From the holy heart of Sayyidina Muhammad to the ulul am who they're following the amr, not the ulul kitab. Allah didn't say, I'm sending you to the people of who read books. The ulul am is a very specific word that they've been dressed from alif, mim, ra. One whom they learned the book and they taught the book. Means these ra, they understood the alif. Every izza and might, every knowledge and reality coming from this alif. Through the being and the reality and the wasila of Sayyidina Muhammad called Muhammadan heart, Muhammadan way, haqqat al Muhammadiyah. If someone said, we never heard Muhammadan, well because you don't read Arabic probably and the whole Arabic world knows there's a haqqaiq which is the highest level of haqqaiq called haqqat al Muhammadiyah. As a result Allah made them to be Rabbaniyoon. 
So Ayatul Kareem when Allah says, Be Rabbaniyoon, Allah is giving a sharat that these are my ulul am. They understood the kitab of Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad the meme, Ati Allah Alif, Ati Rasul meme wa ulul amri minkum is the ra. They understood the book of Allah is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad the ever living book of Allah They learned it and now they're being taught from it because that kitab is speaking through their heart, speaking through their eyes, speaking through their tongue, speaking through their ears, means their whole faculty is being dressed by that meme. So as a result every knowledge and reality is being given. If you're vibrating at that level, at that understanding then Allah is sending you for guidance. How then to match this ulul am, match the understanding of what this ulul am wants for me versus what I want for myself. When I'm matching and I feel no more up and down, those whom understand medicine you do EKG on the patient to see if they're okay and see their heartbeat. At first every answer, every reply, every guidance and understanding is making your heart signal go erratic. Why? Because it causes you stress and duress. Why do you say that? Why do you teach that? What about all these things I've aspired to and wow, all the things I plan to buy and to build and to do and to this and to that, your spike of your heart monitor goes wow all the way up. Super happy. Next talk, wow, super down, going super up, super down. So now you have an erratic heartbeat, it's going up, it's going down, it's going up, it's going down. What we call your bipolar state. Psychologists don't like that. See, bipolar is really dangerous disease. Yeah, this is too. Because <laughs> have you ever dealt with these people, is they're really dangerous. Right? So you're getting the guidance. You're becoming erratic, you're fighting, you're listening to him at night fighting yourself in your room. I'm not going to follow that, I'm not going to do that, why it has to be like this, why it has to be like that? So the beat goes up, the beat goes down, beat goes up, the beat goes down. So everything is erratic. So then what do they want for us now is get closer to flat line. When you know you're, you're getting closer to your tariq, when your tariq is filled with thorns, you're up and down, you're angry, you're happy, angry, you're happy. And literally if you see these people, they're bipolar. They're happy completely one day ecstatic, next day completely upset. I didn't achieve, it didn't happen the way I wanted, you set yourself up, all sorts of reasons. How do we know then we're achieving on this tariq? Because the tariq is very short. From your will to the shaykh's will, this is your entire path. If you matched it and you reached it, you would have reached flat line. You're neither excited nor depressed because you know that every moment of excitement tomorrow there's going to be a difficulty. So what to be excited about? <laughs> it's very short-lived and every type of sadness and depression Allah will take it away the next day will be better. Because you feel that you have submitted and you have thrown yourself upon, at that state there's no more shooting up and shooting down, you're becoming closer to the flat line. And then doctors know and medicine knows, what's flat line? You're dead. And what Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq described about our path, mawt qabl al mawt. Why mawt? Mawt because the pulse of a dead man is submission. Not that you harm yourself, this is not about any literal people turning in now. But the complete combating of Allah's will, not submitting to Allah's will, making my will to be so strong that nobody can say anything to me. Allah want that to be crushed, that up and down to be crushed and bring it to a straight line. 
Not excited, not sad but in taslim. Because Allah says, those whom died in our way are very much alive. This is the world of opposites. You think you're alive in this world, you think you see with your eyes and you hear with your ears. No, you're walking dead. You're not alive, you don't see anything. You're the guy at the bottom of the pool who's dead. It's not a life, it's not what Allah meant for us this filthy world. Those whom truly alive in this dunya, they see with the eyes of their heart, they hear with the eyes of their heart. They see in energies and beatific realities that cannot be imagined. Allah described, those are alive in your world. The rest they're walking dead. And what do walking dead do in the movie? They eat the flesh of each other. And look at our walking dead television, it's all flesh eaters. Look at our walking dead radio, it's all flesh eaters. Now 24 hours a day attacking each other, attacking each other because this is the abode of the walking dead, it was not the abode of the living. Those whom truly reached their hayat, they have an angelic life, an angelic reality. So what? To take people to mouth qabl and mouth flatline so that they can revive you in a Divinely light in which you live on this earth but with your heavenly realities, your heavenly heart, your heavenly hearing, your heavenly seeing, a heart that is from the Divinely Presence. And what would that heart be like? It would be filled with dhikrullah because this is what from Surat Al-Fatiha, the tafsir of Surat Al-Fatiha, Allah would dress them from the seven maqams of Surat Al-Fatiha. As they're reaching up and they re achieve to Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. When Allah dresses the servant by Ayatul Kareem that everything is in hamd and every enjoyment and reality and power for them is to participate in the hamd and that's the energy and the barakah that they receive. And if you keep them too much out of the circle of hamd they feel like they're dying. They're fished it out and they don't know how to function. They have to have a circle of hamd all the time. They have to be in that ocean of hamd and praising. Above Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Allah take them what? To Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Because the verses of Surah Fatiha is from the end is the first gate. The last gate and the reward Allah want to take the servant is after I dressed you from Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen that in every, every reality of hand being dressed upon you, I'm going to take you now to the Ulul Bab. That's why their level is of the highest reality. Once the servant has entered all the different gates, what's the gate that Allah wants to take them now? Go now to the Ba. Enter now into the city of knowledges for all of eternity. Your soul to enter into the city of knowledges for all of eternity. Come to the Ulul Bab, the caretakers and care keep gatekeepers of this Ba. Enter into this ba and be lost with all its uloom and everything under the ba is like a nuqt, like a dot in that power. Means everything Allah want to dress the servant of realities, bless the servant with realities. So then our tariq is as short as following their advice and as difficult is this one little inch of space. How to follow their advice and not follow your own will, not intervene your own will in every understanding, not to take every understanding and teaching and allow it to enter into your head, it will already be lost. We've had previous talks on that. How to take a guidance from them and don't let it come to your head. Where you keep thinking, how's it going to happen? How are we going to do it? How's like this? How's like that? How it's already lost.
that guidance in your head. How is not for you? Your job was merely to do it. How? As soon as you have the understanding of how, you lost the understanding. It entered into the abode of shaitan which is your maqs, which is your head. It left your heart, right? Because ulul amr, they get the command, they do it. They don't ask for a popular vote, is this, should we do, shaykh we do, can we do, can we do, no do it. That would be then the abode of the ulul maqs, the people of the <laughs> <laughs> of brain. That, that would be a, that would be like the UN. Have you ever told them they speak for days and weeks and write and write and write at the end they agree to nothing because it's the ulul maqs, the people of the brain. <laughs> ulul amr, the command comes and they fulfill it to the best of their ability to activate the heart. That becomes our whole struggle in life, don't let it go to the head, keep it in the heart, try to fulfill it the fastest and the best ability that you can and that is our tariq. This very short little couple steps. InshaAllah we pray that Allah dress us, bless us with more and more understanding and to see everything around us as a motivation and nothing is as you see it. Don't think that you see the internet and you see what's happening on the streets and what you think is happening around the world and oh I have an opinion on this and that, just be careful. Nothing is what it seems. That there are things that are happening that is from the abode of shaitan. Our job is to stay out of that reality. We pray that Allah guide us, dress us and bless us with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that love becomes a guidance in which to save us from every type of difficulty inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.